Hello and welcome back to the Checkpoint UK and Ireland YouTube channel. In this short video we will learn how to set up the Checkpoint Mobile Access Blade for use with the standalone Checkpoint Mobile Client for Windows and the Capsule VPN plugin for Windows 8.1 and Windows 10. So I've now moved over to my demo environment and we're going to prepare it to get ready for a remote user to log into one of his servers that are sitting within their traditional office network. It's a nice simple setup, just got our manager and a gateway, and we're going to start off by editing the gateway. So double click the gateway object, and we're going to go with identity awareness first and set up Active Directory on it. So we've got an Active Directory already defined for this server, so just making sure that's all connected up. And this is to allow us to use users in the source column of the access control policy but also for our users to be able to use it to authenticate when they're connecting in through the VPN client. So that is nice and successful, simple as that, two buttons and we're there. The next one, turn on the mobile access blade and this is what's going to allow us to use those VPN clients. So we're going to look at the Capsule VPN plugin for Windows. And we're also going to be enabling Checkpoint Mobile for Windows, so the standalone remote access client that uses the IPsec VPN tunnel. So there are two options. Once again, making sure we hook up the Active Directory domain, and this is what it's going to use to authenticate the users in. So again, select the domain controller you want to use or the Active Directory, hit connect, and wait for that to sync up. So that's test been completed successfully. Once again, next button and finish. While this page is open, we want to make sure that in the mobile access section, we're using the unified access policy rather than the legacy policy. And that means we don't have to edit a separate mobile access blade policy, makes it much easier to manage. Also, while you're here, if you want to change the authentication method from username and password to something else, simply hit settings and choose what authentication method you want to use. Above that in the VPN client section, here if you want to use alternate VPN options, you can enable them there. Uh, but we want to make sure Office Mode has a DNS server attached to it. So we're going to allow Office Mode out to all users, so that means they all get an internal IP address from our default address pool. In this optional parameters button, going to select the primary DNS server and our domain controller is also a DNS server, so that's what I'm going to select. Once that's all done, we're going to publish those changes and move on to making sure our security policy is set to allow remote access users through the gateway. So we're going to click down onto the security policies tab and the first thing we're going to do is make sure our access control policy has the mobile access blade enabled on it. So I've right clicked on it to edit the policy and then I'm going to go down to the access control layer, edit that layer and make sure this mobile access blade is selected. So making sure that's ticked. Once that's ticked, we can carry on and create a rule for our users. So I've already got a remote access section and I'm just going to add a rule below that. Then to set the source, I want to use a either a group of users or a specific user tied into that active directory set up earlier. Now I've not made this, so I'm going to make a new access role and this is going to be Bob's remote admin and I'm going to choose a specific user for this add him in and I know that our admin for the domain controller is Bob and he wants to be able to access it from home then I know he wants to remote desktop on so we've got to enable DNS for him to be able to resolve the name and remote desktop so he can RDP to the server. Finally setting the destination to the domain controller. So WinDC, making sure that's set to accept 
and it's always good to have some logging. So we've just set a access role, Bob's access role, to allow him to connect to the domain controller using either D or using RDP, but allowing him to resolve that name over DNS. So now we're just going to install that policy. So that policy has been successfully installed and we're all ready to download the client to be able to test the VPN connection back in. So just to summarize what we've done so far, we've enabled identity awareness and hooked it up to an AD server, turned on the mobile access blade and set a security rule to allow that remote user to connect to whatever environments he needs to. Now all we need to do is connect Bob to the VPN. So we were going to use the Checkpoint Mobile client for Windows. So if we come to our SK article on endpoint security clients, E8240 is the latest version, and we're just going to choose the VPN standalone client and download that. So once that's downloaded, open it up, hit run, and it will bring you to a install wizard. Make sure we select the checkpoint mobile option. We're not installing the full endpoint security client or the basic secu remote client. Going for checkpoint mobile, accept the terms and condition and install. It sometimes takes a couple of minutes, other times it's a couple of seconds. So just be patient if it takes a little while longer. So this was pretty speedy. All finished and you'll see there's a new client in the system tray. We know it's Checkpoint Mobile because it says Checkpoint Mobile. If that said Endpoint Security or Secu Remote, that just means we selected a different option or the uh, wrong option for this one before. To create a new site, hit connect and it will say no sites configured, configure a new site. Absolutely. And we're going to use the external IP address of the gateway. If you want to change its display name, so what it's titled as, you can add that in here. And hit next. We want to use it as our default VPN. We're going to use username and password because that's what our authentication settings in the smart console were. And that's the site all set up, ready to use. Do we want to connect? Absolutely. Test it out. So we're connecting to that site using Bob and away he goes. So connection successful, all ready to work remotely. If we want to check our IP address, go into the options, properties, and you can see what IP address you've been assigned out of the office mode IP pool. And from there, if we want to test our RDP connectivity to our domain controller, hit connect, you can see now Bob's able to connect straight in and carry on the work he was doing. We got the checkpoint secure mobile for Windows client up and running, but what about the capsule VPN plugin for Windows 10 and Windows 8.1? So if we just head to the Microsoft Store on any Windows PC and search for Capsule VPN, it should come up, Checkpoint Capsule VPN app. Now my Microsoft account has already got this app, so it's free, you just press the get button, and I'm just going to launch it here, and you can see, already downloaded and installed on this client. So from here, I'm just going to go into the VPN settings, open up the VPN settings, add a VPN connection, and change the VPN provider from the built-in Windows to Checkpoint Capsule VPN. And then we can name this anything we like. And then put in again that external gateway of the, the gateway you're using for the VPN terminations. So in this case, I'm... This and then just click save 
and then you can see that's added in as a VPN connection and I can connect click the connect username and password same authentication methods as before same gateway certificate as before and then the same login credentials as before so Bob's now instantly connected and ready to use whatever business apps he needed access to now you've seen how simple it is to set up the checkpoint mobile access blade go out and try it for yourselves thanks for watching and see you on the next one